So I will go over it for you and uh, translate uh, what we have over here. All right. So first, I'm going to start with Hulk, not Hulk Hogan. All right. So these are the Avengers Hulks. Uh, so there are more, but I limited it to these. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if Hulk was OK with that. But, uh, you know, that's that's maybe part of the reason why he was so irate. So this is a, a 2012 Marvel Select Hulk, and um, it's big, it's heavy. I can't believe I've already had it 11 years. Um, it has the different hip joints, which uh, the hips are a lot like the DC action figure hips uh, that preceded 2012. So they have like this uh, joint in the center. They have a lot of articulation that way, but you do get this big gap there. Um, you don't have the double knees, but that's, you know, on a big figure like Hulk, sometimes they don't do that. You do have the foot swivel and you have the ankle articulation. You don't have any toe articulation and you have the bicep movement in here and not the double elbows. Um, and it not the most muscular Hulk there is, um, but, uh, you know, big traps from the back, you can see and some veins and uh, some good, you know, you can move the head up and down and turn it. And uh, you have your swivel is in the torso, which I think is a better looking uh, uh, articulation. It's not always as functional as having the waist and and the torso, but it, it, sometimes when you have the waist, then, you know, then it, it over shoots over the pelvis and then it kind of looks awkward. So that is your Marvel Select Hulk, not to be confused with the Diamond Select Hulk of the same year. Uh, and comparing those, uh, they're about the same size, um, but you can see that the Diamond Select has a greater lat development. Uh, he's doing a lot more uh, rows probably, uh, you know, bent over rows. Uh, that's how you're gonna get that deep uh, back muscle in the lats. Oh, we lost somebody. Um, he's also more vascular, so he's, he's uh, probably watching his calories a little bit more and maybe doing more cardio or maybe just doing a lot more straining. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, this fella here. And he does not have the double knees as well, but see, he has the ball joint hip, so it doesn't get that weird looking, um, you know, like joint right in the middle. Um, you do not have the side articulation on the foot, uh, but you do have an easy and far articulation uh, back and forth on it, so that's nice. Um, and then the hip swivels up in there too, which is good. Um, he turns at the waist, and really what, you know, it, it, it works pretty well because they made his waist really thin, so it doesn't really overshoot the pelvis too much. Um, and the head articulation is even better. So, you know, that's, I think that's, kind of a, a, a better looking or at least better figure in, in some ways. And it, it looks like a younger Hulk. I mean, it's not um, the actor from the Avenger movies. It's uh, it, it might it looks sort of like the Hulk from the 2008 uh, movie. So uh, so they got that there. All right. Moving on, we have another 2012 Avengers Hulk. All right. This one with the brown pants and the uh, again, a little lighter brown and smaller. Uh, it's good. You have, uh, this is just from the first Avengers movie. You have a lot of shoulder articulation. I can go all the way back like, oh, I'm a rotator cuff or I tore my pack. Um, so he moves a lot there. And he's got some pretty big lats that travel down into the back. Um, his pecs are a little bit flat. Um, but a lot of times the Hulk action figures do have the flatter pecs. Um, the arms are, are pretty good, uh, a lot of good detail. He's got the double elbows too. So he can bend up, you know, and almost punch himself. And you got a pretty, you know, pretty good head swivel on there. Um, no special features, you know, as far as in, back in the day where you could um, like maybe squeeze the legs and it would do something or it had a spring where it would punch. 
Um, it does have the double knees too. So look at that all the way back like that. And, and stop kicking yourself, stop kicking yourself. So he can do that. Um, and he does have the ankle swivel. So uh, overall, nice, you know, uh, figure. Um, and, and more hulkish, you know, with the, with the ripped pants. Um, and, and then they started getting all like, oh, he's, he's one of the team. And uh, that's 2015 Hulk. And it's like, oh, let's give him pants that don't rip. And, and you know, to me, it just makes him a lot less savage. He's like, all right, I'm going to plan this out and, and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to wear spandex or something. But then again, he is part of a team. So that's different. This is the Age of Ultron Hulk, 2015. And, uh, you know, he has all the same joints as the uh, 2012 Hulk, but um, he got less muscular. Um, and I'm, I'm not thrilled about that. I mean, look, look at that back. You know, Dorian Yates, uh, the five-time Mr. Olympia back in the 90s and early 2000s, uh, had like arguably the best back ever. And, you know, you get a lot of power and can do a lot of things with a lot of back muscles. So this Hulk really, I don't know, deadlifts, lat pull downs, pull ups, bent over rows, not so good. Uh, this guy's going to do a lot better. Uh, pec wise, they're about the same. Arm wise, they're about the same. So really, this guy just needs to work on the fundamentals more. Um, a little, uh, the calves are even the same. It's really just a different plastic. This is shiny plastic and this is more of a dull plastic. So it's not really the paint, it's actually the, the chemical makeup of the plastic uh, to get that effect. All right, and then moving to the 2017 Hulk. This is the 10th anniversary Hulk, the first 10 years, 2017. And uh, what we've done here, uh, or what they've done with the Hulk is He's um, a scaled down muscularity, right? Just like our 2015 guy. He's got the fancy pants on, double elbows, double knees. You know, he's got all the good articulation. His mouth, he's roaring, very savage. However, there's a problem with this. Um, Hulk has green blood and uh, he's got rosy cheeks and he's got like a scratch on his chest. So, um, why would that, and, and it's red, reddish. So it wouldn't be reddish, okay? He would have green blood. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if they thought he looked cuter with a little bit of the rosy cheeks, you know? Uh, but uh, it shouldn't be, okay? All right, um, and then we have little blocky bot things. And then um, this is one of the mini May talks. I have several, but uh, for this show, I figured I'd bring this guy out and he's cute. You know, and they, and the mini mates are, they really are action figures. I mean, they have all, you know, a lot of articulation. They, they twist and the head uh, turns and you can actually, sometimes they have features like you can take off the hair and change it with a helmet or something like that. Um, not with this one, but, but sometimes it is like that. So, you know, that's your little Hulk. So you can play with your Legos with that. Um, it doesn't, uh, well, I kind of will attach actually to a Lego, Lego divot. Um, not real, you, you kind of have to put like one of those little one by one divots on so to be raised up so you can get on there. Um, they do have a Lego Hulk, but it has like only like this kind of articulation and the legs don't move. So, you know, have fun with that, right? All right, um, now we're gonna get to our uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, which we have a lot of Hulk Hogan's. And uh, well, this is my favorite uh, in some ways, Hulk Hogan, and, and, and actually among, I think, some of the greatest action figures um, I have or, or ever made. 2003, the experiment with using silicone. And what it has, it has a um, endoskeleton. Perhaps it's made out of metal. I think it, it might be because it has the little air holes to prevent it from rusting inside. So I'm thinking that it's probably metal. And you have, you know, it can twist and stay in position. And um, his arm, it, it has a ratchet, click, click, click. And you can actually make it look like he's kind of, because the silicone kind of flexing the muscle, he can, you know, squeeze his uh, pecs together. So he has like a actually working clavicle, you know, so he can like do a most muscular pose. Um, now the legs are hard plastic, but they're, 
it, they're good because it'll they're easy to make him stand and you know even and the head turns and that even has a ratchet so really neat um the wrists turn so i just think that this uh is a fantastic figure um i know i have the rock rvd booker t um as well made like that um then we have our little block uh bot hulk hogan i tried to look on the bottom i think it's 2015 and this would come with a set of like lego type of uh ring and uh, i have roman reigns and seth rollins um and it came with the ultimate warrior the hulk came with the ultimate warrior but there's your hulk one and their hands are the size of the little like Lego divots. So you can put that in the side of one of your figures. You see, they have like a little divot inside the side so he can like hold the guy up over his head. So there you are. That's your, you know, uh, yellow and red Hulk, right? Or red and yellow Hulk. So not to be, uh, you know, obviously we have the uh, NWO Hulks over here. So we'll, we'll be going to them. Let me see who fell. Um... Oh, yeah. One of our NWO Hulks. Okay, well, we'll get to that guy. All right, so um, in 2014, this is going to be interesting. So we have, uh, you know, our uh, elite edition Hulk Hogan, right? He's got the, the feather boa, and you can change his outfit. I've never opened this. Um, 2014. What's interesting is, now it says he's, uh, his debut was 1979, and he's 302 pounds, but he's only six foot two. Hulk Hogan's always been known to be six foot seven. However, multiple back surgeries, hip surgeries, and things like that. He's not as tall as he used to be. So I guess maybe in 2014, he was uh, six foot two. Uh, so that's, you know, that's kind of an interesting uh, factoid, right? There. Uh, so that's that Hulk Hogan. And then we have our 2014 basic figure Hulk Hogan. And that's the WrestleMania Heritage Series Hulk. And you can see the back of that. And uh, that's just, you know, your run of the mill, like, oh, he's a hero. And uh, let's even put him in some movies, Hulk, you know? So he has that, that 1980s look, you know? And then he's got the headband because, you know, just to stop the sweat from going into his eyes, uh, you know? So that's very 80s, right? And um, 2015. We have our Hall of Fame Hulk when he was in the Hall of Fame. No stats on his size or anything on the back of that, just his signature. So, and then you got your uh, class of 2005 Hulk, uh, but it came out in 2015. So, uh, you know, there, there he is, the red and yellow. He's smiling. He's, he's very happy, very happy to be there. Okay. So that's that guy. And then... Uh, we can go, this is also uh, WWE, I believe. Yeah, this is still WWE, not WWF. I don't have any WWF era Hulk Hogan's. Uh, but this is your classic superstars. This was uh, meant to be the top of the line. And uh, this is Jack's Pacific um, action figure. It's a different line. Um, in fact, this is also Jack Specific. So this guy here is also Jack Specific. Different toy company. Um, they didn't have all the articulation that they have today. And they had just a few basic bodies. Like it'd be like, well, this body goes with Hulk and it goes with the Warlord. And it goes with uh, Animal from the Road Warriors. And then they would have another body that might be a little leaner and muscular. And that would be Hulk from, uh, you know, uh, the Road Warriors. And then it might be the ultimate warrior. So they, they would scale them like that and just have different torsos and legs that they would utilize. But the head sculpts were really, really good. I mean, take a look at that. So really good head sculpt. And um, he was six foot seven on the back of this package. Uh, same uh, a 275 though, a leaner, leaner, meaner Hulk, um, not the 302 uh, Hulk Hogan. So... Uh, then we have also Jack Specific. We have the Rocky Three, which I think uh, that movie was 1983. I think I'm gonna have to look that up. But uh, Rocky Three Thunderlips Hulk, and that's also Jack Specific. You can see it's got the um, 
the less articulated legs, but they're big and muscular, and uh, so is this torso. It's the same torso that you have uh, over here. In fact, let me compare it to show you here. Uh, so if we look at, I didn't open it right, but we could still see that this is uh, Mattel, okay, and this is Jack Pacific. So you can see the arms have more definition, um, and they're not as, the cross section, you can't tell here, but I know the cross section of the arm, which is um, like from, from here to here, is thinner on the WWE, the Mattel line, and it's thicker and rounder on the Jack Pacific. Uh, so, you know, the Jack Pacific, they, they have the, again, like the, so the big torsos and stuff like that, but a little bit less articulation, but excellent head sculpts. You have, you know, you have this, uh, you know, flowing cape that he wore and the hat comes off, but I bungeed it on there because I was tired of it falling off and was worried about losing it. Uh, and then I do have a basic Hulk Hogan from 2011. And again, I can't believe this thing's been sitting, you know, uh, you know, for 12 years on a shelf. But here, you know, this is a good example it doesn't have the all the it actually has the same articulation as a Jack Pacific figure, not as much as a Mattel Elite figure. But you can see the arm difference. And you can see the cross section I was talking about. So but this one's actually pretty round. That that's actually one of the uh I think they upgraded the arm on there, because there's some that are really thin. Um but you know it's a smaller figure. Uh but what they did is they they started making all of these to scale with the other figures. So if, if a figure was taller than another figure, really short, they, they emulated their real size. Whereas the Jack Pacific, they kind of, you know, it just, it depends on which mold they were using the general mold for which figure. Um, this figure also, um, the sunglasses come off. Yeah. So take a look at that. So here's your little sunglasses and, uh, you know, not losing those is, you know, one of those things, right? You don't want to lose it. But uh, sometimes uh, you just, you know, you, I bungee these things on. Um, all right. Now we're going to go back in time to WCW days when Hulk Hogan uh, became dissatisfied with uh, Vince McMahon, who owns uh, WWE, back then WWF, um, and the reason they had to change from WWF to WWE is the World Wildlife Federation, WWF. And uh, their name is older than the World Wrestling Federation. And they sued over that uh, because when you type in WWF on, you know, let's say you're searching for the Wild uh, Wildlife Federation, it would bring you to, because on your Google search, it would go to wrestling. And they're like, well, you know, that kind of changes, like, we want to be top of mind with WWF. So they went to court over it, and the World Wildlife Federation won because they had that, those initials first. So uh, WWE, they changed their name to World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, so uh, this is Hulk Hogan. So Hulk Hogan became dissatisfied with his relationship with uh, Vince McMahon. There's different reasons for that. Some people say it was just an ego thing because Hulk Hogan... Uh, felt like he really built WWF E to its fame and Vince said nobody's bigger than wrestling and you know whatever there was a fallout but um, in any case so here he went to WCW and um, actually uh, when he went there he didn't start out as red and yellow uh, Hulk he actually went there as kind of a bad guy he went there as in 99 as a uh, part of the NWO, the New World Order, um, Hulk Hogan, and um, you know he eventually he became champ. Actually, it's really famous about how uh, he, it was just a whole thing where like the the guy who was champ, uh, Hulk Hogan just tapped him with in the finger with his chest. I think it was Kevin Nash, and Kevin Nash went down and then let Hulk pin him and become champ. So, uh, you know, that was like, it was not even a match because they were friends. So, uh, so Hulk's champ here, uh, this, this comes off. Um, you can take that off. You can see he's quite an, uh, a musc uh, muscular figure. And, and the belt comes off too. I'm gonna show you this. 
Yeah. It's got all these little, like, there we go, little, like, ratchets, but, you know, you can see that up close, closer there. And, and he has a spray can, so after the NWO, there was a, a whole group of wrestlers that the storyline was they led a rebellion against the management of WCW, these group of wrestlers, and they took over, and they were beating up all the non-WCW uh, wrestlers, and then they would spray paint onto them. Uh, in you know on their chest or their back when they're defeated and can't move uh, NWO New World World Order and some people consider that the best era of wrestling ever so all right so here's this Hulk Hogan figure and uh, this one has uh, sunglasses that do not come off but uh, this is this is one of those figures that actually has features now these are made by Toy Biz which um, as we've seen uh, in the past, perhaps you may have seen one of my, uh, the best Hulk action figures between 2003, 2006 were made by Toy Biz. And Toy Biz would, not only were they really good at sculpting, but they would have special features. So this one, uh, when you squeeze the legs, he punches, but there's more. So he has this arm articulation, right? He, he can do, now it's right in the middle of the bicep. So instead of, you know, it, it would be nicer if it was right there, right, instead of cutting through. But they, they had a reason for that. Um, maybe one, one of the reasons was not thinking it through. <laughs> but the other thing is it has this little dial on the back. So what happens is you can squeeze the legs, and then you turn the dial. Who thought of this? It's amazing. You turn this dial, and it locks this arm. Why would it do that? And then he can go like that. So he can bend his elbow turn it like this. The reason is he gets another wrestler into a headlock. He can hold it in place and then punch him in the head with the other fist. Real nice, right? But uh, I tell you, the, the cleverness, you, you know, not only do you make an action figure with, you know, articulated joints and a head that turns, I mean, the waist doesn't turn and everything, but the arms swivel, you know, you squeeze the legs and, and, and it, you know, it moves in, but then you put a locking mechanism where you can lock the arm. I mean, amazing. And these were like 10 or less back at the time. It might have even been as low as like $6.99. Uh, this was, all right, this was $7.99 new. I got a KB Toys for $2.99. So I got a lot of, ah, a lot of those back then uh, for less. So that's that hole. Now, um, let's see here. Okay, so here's another, um, let's see, ah. This is, there was another faction. You know, angry people can't get along with other angry people. So the NWO, white and black, split and became the NWO, red and black. Uh, I think that's the wolf pack, but uh, that might be confusing my NWOs. Um, I know there was the LWO, the Latino World Order, too. So, um, so here's the Hulk Hogan. It has the same feature as far as squeezing the legs and, and it has a locking mechanism. No sunglasses, so that's kind of cool. The top doesn't come off, um, but I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why they, I think it, it probably came with some other accessory in the box. And I, you know, I take these accessories and I put them in a big box and I, I don't really always pay attention to where they are. Um, he has a belt that comes off. Now what, what Hulk Hogan uh, would do and even Back in the 80s, in the early 80s, he, he would wear like a weightlifting belt and then he'd take it off and he'd, he'd beat the bad guy or the good guy, depending on his, which, uh, you know, what he, whether he was playing the good guy or the bad guy while he was wrestling. But he'd beat you with a leather weightlifting belt, which I know that sounds really bad, but those belts are really thick and they don't really slap real well. So it really wouldn't hurt. I mean, you'd have to really try hard to make it hurt, but it looked bad, right? So that's Hulk Hogan. Uh, red and black, and I don't think he was the red and black very long. Um, and let's see, he's falling over here. Um, all right, I have to get to that. All right, so this Hulk, this is 2015. Now, this is a group of action figures that WWE put out. They're really well made. They're really cool, too. And the head sculpts are really good. They really look like the wrestlers. Now, this body went to Rusev. The way these toys were made is that they'd come apart. 
So you could pull the heads off and trade their heads in. You could pull their arms off and trade their arms. So whatever you like, you could change their hands. These are actually uh, gloves that fit on top of the hands. So I bungeed them on so they I wouldn't lose them. You could change, um, yeah, you could change the boots and you could change, actually you could change the whole torso. It would just come apart like that. Uh, and you, so you, you can't, I don't think the hips come apart. Um, yeah, I don't think so, but you would, you know, you could change the boots and everything. So I made this Hulk Hogan figure and then, um, it, what would happen is you'd, you'd buy these figures. Sometimes they'd come in a two pack and they'd come with a bunch of accessories and an extra head. And then you could just make your own custom figure. So I thought, you know, this kind of is the Hulk Hogan that I'd, I'd make. What's really great about them is they have excellent articulation. The head sculpts are good. They look good and they're fun and they come apart kind of easy, unfortunately, but it doesn't really matter. They, they stay together well enough. And you could take off this, this um, you know, war vest he's got on here. I guess it looks like it's probably bulletproof and it's got like, you know, molded in like weapons and stuff. Um, all right. And then this came out last year and, and I guess I dropped the hat out there. It is. Get that. So this is NWO Hulk, but this is made out of the new He-Man sculpts. So this you can play with, with your He-Man. Now there is W. W, let me see, uh, well, M, uh, Masters of the, uh, you know, so many different things. There's Masters of the Universe wrestlers, okay? And uh, this is not actually one of those. There are like the Masters of the Universe, they would take uh, like Roddy Piper and they would make him into um, similar to a bad guy in this case uh, in, uh, Masters of the Universe, you know, the He-Man world. And then they would take Kane and they made him like Trapjaw in the He-Man world. And he's got like a removable arm that comes off and it's like a flame. Um, they would take, uh, they took, let's see, like John Cena and they made him like a clear blue plastic. And he is like Faker He-Man, which is a blue version and of a, like a bad robotic version of He-Man. And John Cena is playing a bad robotic version of John Cena in this world. So they're all the same scale as the five and a half scale He-Man figures. So if you watch any of my He-Man videos, you can see that. Um, this is not, this is the same body that you would get on the 5.5 inch He-Man figures, but it's not uh, that universe. It's, it's just Hulk Hogan with that body. And what's great about it is it has all that great articulation that came with the new five and a half inch He-Man figures which is the same size as the 1983 He-Man figures, but they gave them the articulation they never had. So the waist twist. So he's got the removable belt that he can hit you with. Uh, obviously, he's got uh, the um, do-rag that, you know, fell off. He's got sunglasses that uh, they do come off. I bungeed them on, okay? And, um, and then he's got, you know, like a real cloth NWO uh, vest that actually has Velcro. So I guess, yeah, you can squeeze it together and Velcro it on. And he's got the NWO belt as champion, you know, cause it's not WCW anymore. They took over and then they put NWO on the belt. They spray painted it on there. So that's what I have here today. Uh, oh, and then of course there's big giant Hulk Hogan uh, that just couldn't get along with the Hulk. And, um, you know, it's got real clothing, limited articulation, um, but, you know, it's just impressive to have it standing there. Um, and this Hulk, I think these, uh, they were about uh, $25, $30. And uh, I remember it was in, at the back of uh, Burlington Coat Factory. Um, and I still were three of them. And I, I, I would go every week and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. And uh, eventually I went down to $12.99 and I said, okay, that's when I'm going to get it. So uh, $12.99 and then uh, the other two disappeared soon after that. So I was really glad to get that. So last thing I forgot to show you was this Hogan uh, has the big boot. So it has a trigger in the back. Again, uh, this is the toy biz. So they always give you an extra feature. 
and uh, you'd push this trigger down and there his boot would come up. So you'd ratchet, you'd hear it snap and then push that. And then he could do like the leg drop, which is largely responsible for uh, his bad back. And uh, he had a run in with Sting. There was like a rivalry there. And so there's the big uh, Sting. Uh, this is like a piece of plastic and it's like a puzzle and he would kick through it. Um, and this is uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, the biker, and this is where I got some of the sound effects from. And you'd uh, you push the skull in here, and there's the button. And push it again. And um, it even has, ah, there's a rocker. See this where the, uh, where the clutch is, so that would uh, rock. That's pretty neat, huh? Good old toy days, you know? It, the figure comes off uh, here, it lights up, and you have a rocker where his foot is to make the motorcycle sound, and then the button for the talking. So, anyway, thanks.